Hello, my name is John Cassie Rice. I had the pleasure to be your host for this podcast. And we're having a series of talks where people have been using NLP at work and in their day-to-day -day lives. And I had the great pleasure to have Jill Davis on the line with us today. Hi, Jill. Hi, John. How are you? Yeah, excellent, thanks. I think I've known you now for oh, almost 10 years, is it? Oh, yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fabulous. Uh, Jill, can you, thank yeah. you for taking the time to share a little bit about your experience using NLP. And just for the listeners, just give us a little bit of background, what you've been involved in, what you've been doing in life. Okay. Um, well, 10 years ago, um, it's actually, for me, it's about 11 years now, I left my corporate job. Um, I was a, a project manager, essentially, working for a professional services company. And I used to manage all their in-house knowledge, uh, managing all their intranet sites and building it. And so doing a lot of project management around you know, how they would take their products and promote them within the organization and externally. So we used to do a lot of brainstorming with um, what we called the subject matter experts, basically, to download their information and knowledge and create methodologies about what they were actually intending to deliver. So what they, would, uh, what they were starting out with and what they were going to end up with. What a great yeah. skill. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so really we were looking at the end point, saying, where do you want to get to? You know, who are your clients? How are you going to deliver this? And you know, where can we help you along the line? What are the triggers that people are going to be looking for that's going to bring them into this product? Right. And so we can break down all the steps, basically, for them and to create the methodologies. So basically, and with project management, I'm a Prince uh, to qualified project manager. And the whole idea of uh, project management is to begin with the end in mind, which I didn't realise then at the time when I was working, its significance with NLP. Yes. Was, this was, you know, I need to understand where do you, where are you now and where do you want to get to? Excellent. And, and I bet you that served you well over the years. Yeah, excellent. Because it was from there then, uh, when I left the corporate sector, um, or just before I left, I started looking around thinking, okay, uh, my career in the professional services organisation is coming to an end. My corporate life is coming to an end. I'm going to set out on my own. What do I want to do? So I started looking at coaching as being the most logical step forward to coach small businesses um, in terms of their breaking down their methodology and taking services to market. And little did I know then uh, the ins and outs of small businesses and how well equipped they actually were. <laughs> yes, and uh, I have to say, you know, I, I had to learn a little bit of humbleness and humility. Yes around um it couldn't just come from a you know like multi-billion pound organization multi-million pound services and expect it to be accepted by small businesses that have been operating for a lot longer than i've probably been working in the corporate sector so yes. um but i did want to do coaching and at least help other people i suppose you know, like that was my introduction was since i knew that i had i felt that i had a lot of skills had a lot of knowledge, I've worked in various sectors, not just corporate, but I've worked in small organisations. I started out in the travel industry. Um, so, and I was re a researcher by nature anyway, as well as doing project management. And I think, you know, I've got a collection of skills, surely I can help somebody with this. So, yes. so it was then, how do I uh, embrace everything that I know and deliver it for others? And um, I suppose doing a coaching qualification was really qualifying what I was actually already doing. Yeah. And well, I know you've done a lot of coaching. You still do coaching, don't you, Jill? I still do coaching, yes. And you're also doing property management as well? I do. Uh, yes, I have um, now my own property business. I, I've bought and renovated property. I've converted some properties. And I'm beginning to start um, offering mentoring around how to find properties, how to place them, how to how to deliver them, basically, you know, like how to develop them. And um, 
So um, I'm increasingly working in that sphere. Um, I'm part of the mastermind group and we meet on a regular monthly basis to look at all different aspects of the property market um, to help each other, support each other with all our various different uh, challenges that we're facing. So yeah. I, I, I hesitate not to use the word problems because they're, they're not problems, they're challenges because every, every challenge that's presented is basically another opportunity. It's just about being able to switch it on its head and evaluating what's the, okay, this is the challenge, how do we deal with it? And then what will that give us uh, once we've got over it, around it, or whatever we need to do yes. with it? So, um, what and, a wealth of knowledge you have to bring to the table. Thank you. Excellent. So, so I'm interested, how did you get involved with the NLP? So what attracted you to NLP? Right. Well, when I uh, did my co a coaching qualification, and um, it was a distance learning, so they would mention NLP in the coaching and then tell me that it was very different, that coaching was different from NLP. Yes. So it just, it just triggered my curiosity, basically. So once I qualified as a personal and executive coach, I thought I want to explore this NLP uh, and understand it a little bit more. I didn't even know what NLP stood for at the time. You know, like it wasn't, as you know, like, so I hadn't been working in that area, so I didn't even know. Yes. I was curious as to, okay, I'm told some of the coaching that I did was using some NLP terminology or some questions, but without actually telling me what it was or right. how it worked. So it was really, I, I felt that, the coaching just as a standalone was good, useful skills to have. But if I wanted to be able to deliver a better um, package, I needed to understand what NLP was. That so makes a lot of that's sense. how I got involved with it. And that's how I met you. Excellent. Yes. And, and it's, the, the amount of coaches I've spoken to that have said once they've added the NLP in, it really does make a difference. It gives them a lot more flexibility and the way you, to work with people yeah because the um i found to begin with to be honest i found nlp quite challenging because it teaches you what you already know yes um but gives you greater awareness of what you know and then how to do it so you have this awareness of okay what i'm saying is maybe it's an nlp way of saying something um, but I've always done this, but now I've got this added um, quality to it to tell me, you know, the context in which it's being said, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, Have you got any um, examples of that in action? Maybe when you coach somebody or you've worked with somebody? It was like, you know, if you're asking questions, um, you know, I learned wisdom accessing questions. So if you ask somebody like a what question or a how question, you're automatically kicking in their unconscious uh, part of their their brain. And even if you ask it of yourself, you're kicking in your unconscious part of the brain. And it will automatically start looking for answers. Now those answers may not come up straight away, but the unconscious will continue working in the background, even when you're not thinking of it. That's why, you know, like when you think sometimes, oh, you're, you're thinking of a movie star saying, uh, movie but you can't you can see their face but you can't remember who it was so you ask yourself well, what movie was it in what movie was it in and then you'll carry on doing something and then suddenly in the middle of doing i don't know like the washing up many hours later the name of that person yeah. you know like george clooney or whoever it may be will suddenly spring to your mind because you know your unconscious is conscious is constantly working on your behalf Yes. So it's in that awareness about how we actually process information. Um, yeah, so if I, I, I did this for many years after learning NLP as well. It's just to, when I wake up in the morning, it's to ask myself how I'm feeling. And then looking at how I make decisions in the morning to get dressed. You know, what prompts me to choose a certain colour or a particular outfit 
um, is it the material? Is it because of the colour? Is it because of how I'm feeling? And some people may think, well, that's really anal to do that. But it's, <laughs> it really gives me, it, you know, like when I was doing it more at a conscious level, because normally we do these things unconsciously. Yes. So what NLP taught me was how to be consciously aware of the unconscious, if you see, our yeah. unconscious decision-making process. Because this is what Richard Bandler um, used to say, is why do we do the things that we do? Um, I can't think of the name of his book offhand, but um, it's a very famous one, I'm sure you know it. But, um, Using your brain for a change? Yes, using your brain for a change. And in there, you know, like, this is, this is what he asked, you know, why do we make these decisions? How do yeah. we make these decisions? You know, at what point when you wake up in the morning do you actually know that you're awake? And that's, <laughs> yeah, because we just wake up and we either feel good or we feel bad and we get out of bed and carry on the day. Yeah. At what point did you realise that you were actually awake? Yeah, well, so I think there's two things going on there. The one is, which I don't want to lose, is that the NLP brought an awareness to the coaching that it, the, uh, we're not just coaching the conscious mind, the unconscious mind is involved in there and questions are very powerful and they trigger a long lasting process. Then within that, you built this self-awareness where you started to grow this routine you had in the morning where you become aware of when you're waking up and the decisions you were making, which are all coming from your unconscious mind, could impact on the day ahead. And you consciously started to sort of think about, so what results would I like today? And how does this color that I'm wearing or this action I'm taking affect that? Would that be correct? Yeah, it's, it's that. Yeah, exactly. You know, like this is, you know, like what's the outcome? And there was, when I, I did the Master NLP with you. Yes. And so I did that whole project um, about modeling other people. And, um, one of the people I interviewed, uh, you just reminded me actually, because he was a very senior chief, chief executive for, at the time, NatWest Bank, I'm allowed to say it because he's not, no longer there. Okay. He's bigger and greater things, I believe. Um, in fact, actually, I think he got an MBE recently, I saw. But, um, you know, like one of the things like he, used to, he, he said to me when I was interviewing him was um, about how he would program his day from the night before. So, so we say, you know, like, how do you determine what sort of day you're going to have tomorrow? We'd say, because I've already pre-planned it. Yes. And many of the people I interviewed for that modeling project said similar things in more or less the same, same thing is the whether or not they were planning for the following day. They'd already visualized it. They'd already pre-planned it. They'd already, already worked through the process of choice, if you like, as to how they wanted to feel and the outcome they wanted to achieve by the end of that day. So that's why every day they could almost pre-program themselves to have a good day because they've already processed it uh, the night before. And the reason it's important to do it the night before is because then again, because the unconscious is constantly working while we're sleeping. So that programming the night before is important to the decisions that you make uh, during the following day or during whatever I interview somebody who does uh, serious expeditions and um, you know like how they behave when they're faced with the biggest challenges. Yes now you mentioned the master practitioner you're talking about the modeling project there and it's a great thing to go through but it's a huge amount of work isn't it? <laughs> 200 slides John I remember yeah. you know. <laughs> so, would you share just a little bit about your experience of the master practitioner because not everybody decides to go or go ahead and do the master practitioner I think for me if you want great insight about yourself and others um, yes it is a lot of work you have to listen to and watch hours and hours of video and audio recordings to and just make that clear that's not a watching me that's when you're modeling human excellence that's right when you're you know I'd, I'd go along I got sort of permission from the people that I was uh, wanted to model and they range from uh, because I was modeling presentation skills to understand what it was like to be a great presenter the leadership and presentation and um, so they all worked in that field in one form or another whether they were NLP practitioners themselves 
or they'd worked in the leadership field. Um, as I said, they were, they were leading expeditions or teaching NLP. So that was, so I set a certain criteria that I wanted to achieve, which I shared with them beforehand. And then I had a list of about uh, 50 or so questions that I wanted to cover during the interview process. And the funny thing is, is that now when I look back on it, I think, God, those poor people, I subjected them to quite a lot of interrogation <laughs> for about an hour, between an hour and a half and two hours. They were really, really generous with their time. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's possible that now, once you've been through the process, it's possible that I can do it in a lot faster time. It doesn't take me two hours to sort of like assess it. But uh, during the time, because I was learning not only the, the process of questioning, but then I was recording and looking at their body language as well. So it's all sort of like in their, um, you know, that we were talking about just now, sort of like the sensory acuity, you know, like looking at the way their eyes move, uh, the tonality of their voices, you know, like I introduced some audio equipment so that I could tell when there were pauses when people were speaking, which ordinarily, when you're doing it at a conscious level, you probably don't even notice the pause in somebody when you're speaking to them. But when you start analysing it at a very micro level, you start seeing the patterns of how people speak, their tonality, um, the speed at which they're speaking, the pauses. Then you look at you know, like you can see the changes in their um, facial expressions, whether they're using hand language, um, which none of this would. I wouldn't have had any of that awareness had I not done the interviews and you know, when they were pointing at different things, you know, like, you know, like there was, I, at one point I, I remember one, I spoke to somebody who's an author of many books on coaching and, um, and I asked him where he got the information from in his brain and he pointed to the back of his brain. And um, I can't remember the exact uh, connection now, but there is a point in the brain that's that's the learning point. I know you've done studies on the brain, so you probably. But there was a particular point as to why he pointed to that particular part of his brain. And um, had I not done the interview, you know, and looked at the the video in such detail, I would never. I might not have picked that up. But you, anyway, you basically learned to read the unconscious mind. Yeah, exactly. So you look at the way in which people point to the parts of their brain um, that mean something to them. You know, they're pointing here, you know, as I said, I can't remember the terms now, but, you know, the prefrontal cortex or whatever so yep. will, will mean something. It has a meaning to point to the back. It has a meaning. It's to do with language and yeah. learning. You know, so and people in, intuitively do it um, and speak. Um, you know, like saying that's downright correct or whatever, because when you're looking downright, yeah. you know, you're looking at knowledge. So, you know, it's just knowing that language and what we point to all actually has a connection, but we consciously, we're not really aware of it. It's only when you look at it in detail that you become really familiar with it. Yeah, and I think from... Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think what happened then is you learned all these skills on the practitioner, which were great. And then when you got to the master practitioner, you really had to own them to be able to do the modeling project. Yeah, you have to put them into practice and then you actually understand in a much more detailed um, way. You know, like you really understand the significance of it. You understand you know, like, um, how the language is actually codified, what it actually means, and then you can break it down. I mean, I'm, I, I'm quite a detailed person anyway, so obviously I went into a lot of detail, probably more so than a lot of people. But, you know, like, but I really enjoyed doing it. Um, you know, so I had this, it's a, a great reference point um, that I can go back to and have a look at at any point you know, like, so that it will make sense of what I've actually learned. So, so that's it. It's given a practical application to what you've learned, really. Yes. And, um, and then from that, I'm able to, you know, as I said, that when I'm coaching people, that I can look at their body language, I can hear what they're saying. Um, you know, I can twist my language around so that I can either make it more visual 
or say more auditory for some people, you yes. know, let's start, I can pick up their senses and then start mirroring as a better way. Because, you know, if I really tune in when I'm coaching, which is what I do, I'm totally focused on that person. Yeah, you know, I'm listening to what they're saying, how they're saying it, looking at their physiognomy, you know, like looking at any changes, looking at their eyes, whether they're moving, whether that. You know, like if they're recalling something, are they recording it in a visual way? Are they recording it in an auditory way? So, so they're the skills that from the modeling that basically I learned how to, that, to really get an in-depth understanding about how it all works. Excellent. So you've been involved in NLP a long time now, and I'm guessing it's become much more part of you and you, you don't necessarily label that I'm doing NLP. Uh, so, so what's the big difference now than from when you started? Um, I think it's it's all about awareness, really, all the time. You know, like I have greater awareness of myself. You know, like and um, the other part of NLP that I really like is the trance work. Yes. Yeah. I also went on and did after doing the NLP, I went on and did the master hypnosis and did again did another thesis on that basically. So. Um, and the trance work I really like. I do a lot of self hypnosis. That had I not done the NLP, I wouldn't have done. So, and the self hypnosis is all about awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, existence, really, living for me is about awareness on a daily basis. You know, I, I meditate in the morning so that I'm in tune with who I am. Yes. And so I have that awareness around me all the time. Um, if have you I, found that's translated into? So maybe when you're buying a property, maybe when you're um, coaching or mentoring somebody through property buying, have you noticed it filtering through that kind of awareness? Um, yeah, the awareness is it's looking as again, you know, like it, because it's more of a project. You know, it's about having a well-formed outcome, basically. You know, like yes. it's looking, beginning with the end in mind. So it's having awareness. Yes, it's it's being very much in tune uh, with well, what is it that we're buying, what's the opportunity here, why are we doing this, and now how are we going to improve it? You know, how are we actually going to be living in this space? And uh, if we're not actually going to be living in it, because I always think of, you know, like they always talk about in business your exit route. Um, so even if we were looking at this particular, we've just bought a house now on auction, which was quite a... It was out of my comfort zone, but you know, I did it. But, you know, like that self-awareness is, you know, you've got to be really on the ball uh, once you're going through that process. I've done all the homework and everything. But now that we've got the, the project, having done all the research, make sure that it all stacks up, is then looking at, okay, well, if we live in it, we can do X, Y, and Z. That's great. But at some point, if we're going to be selling it, how are we going to ensure that this is a sellable project? Yeah, because at the end of the day, this is it's it's income generation. It's a home, but it has an exit to it that's going to be passed on to somebody else. So it's having that awareness about how you use the space. Um, I suppose, yeah, you know, it, it's looking at, um, yeah, you know, all the different aspects of it. As I said, you're right before. Is it's it's not a problem. That there are challenges. It's how to overcome it and what's the best way and who to communicate with about it. So. Um, like yesterday, say, for example, had an architect come in, the planner, you know, could make sure that he understands what our objectives are. So, you know, like in the language that we'll use with him is to be very clear that, you know, he's got self, he's got the awareness of what it is that we're trying to achieve. So, so that when he's drawing out his plans, you know, like that we're on uh, the same page, basically, you know, like that he's not drawing something that, um, we're actually asking for something else. So it's making sure. So it's all that interaction. And also another thing is, is that when I'm with the state agents who's selling is to be very careful of the language that they're using with you because they're very practiced NLP people, even if they don't realize it. Um, and they're constantly gathering information. Yes. So I flip it on its head and I'm constantly gathering information from them too because I want to know what their objectives are. So I do it in a very subtle way. And I start asking them questions about how they're going to use the information I'm imparting to them. 
So Wow, that's excellent. So it sounds like we've almost come full circle here. We started with the project management and we ended <laughs> up back to that project management. And it sounds like all, you're using all your skills from all areas of your life. And yeah. you've been able to take what you've learned in the coaching, within the NLP and the hypnosis, and, but also translate that into a business setting. Yeah, so, exactly. Okay. Sorry, Jill. Go on. No, no, no. Sorry. We're just agreeing with you, John. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody was um, keen to find out a little bit more about maybe some coaching from you or some mentoring around the property, um, how would they get in contact with you, Jill? Um, just contact me via my email, which is Jill, G-I-L-L. Um, I'm not a J, it's G. So G for golf, I-L-L, at D-G, that's Delta Golf Property dot biz b-i-z um okay. I see we'll you. also have that on the website below so that people can uh, click on that oh, okay, and that's good. email you yeah um, yeah i'd be more than happy to help have a initial chat find out what it is that they want and then we can explore how i can actually help them so that's great and if you're thinking of taking up anything to do with property or involved in it, I'd highly recommend that. Jill has a wealth of knowledge and she's, she's very kind and she really does like to make a difference. <laughs> so thank you ever so much for sharing all that with us, Jill. You're very welcome, John. Thanks very much for asking. It's been a Thanks. pleasure. Thank you. I, if you know anybody who would like to appear on the podcast who's got something they would like to share with us, please do let me know at john at nlpcourses.com. And if you've got any questions, please do pop them in the box below. And I look forward to catching up with you soon. Have a great week. See you soon.